Hey guys, how are you doing? I'm sure everybody knows Nathaniel Drew. He's one of the most interesting YouTubers out there. And he recently published a video entitled The Italian language doesn't make any sense. I personally love his videos and I have a great esteem of him. So this video is like no hard feelings. But I'm Italian and I have to answer this video. I have to. Just to give you guys some explanations of why sometimes Italian language makes no sense. He's basically right. Sometimes Italian language is quite illogical. But this is true for all languages in the world. Meaning that all languages are a bit crazy because they passed through the centuries, they got several influences and evolutions that eventually forged the today's language. Let's listen together to the first claim. They sound ridiculous. So, without further ado, le bestemmie. Italians know what's coming here. <laughs> In most languages, you have two tiers, right? You have normal words and then you have bad words, the words that you don't say around children. Um, and these in Italian are called the parolacce. So normal words and bad words. Every language has them. Uh, in English, it's words like fuck, shit, damn. And in Italian, they would be words like This video is so getting demonetized if YouTube figures out what I'm saying in Italian. Anyway, so we have normal words and we have bad words, but there's another level beyond that in Italian that does not exist in other languages, as far as I'm aware. This is what makes Italian so great, in my opinion. This new level is called le bestemmie, uh, and that translates to blasphemy, okay? Now, I do not mean to be disrespectful here, okay? And I mean it when I say you really should not use these words around Italians. They will get offended. They're literally the worst things you can say in Italian. I'm, I'm not exaggerating. However, Okay, and this is the caveat, and this is the reason why I'm talking about this. When you translate them to English, they don't make any sense whatsoever. They don't even really sound that bad. <laughs> Blasphemy. This is quite typical, if not unique, of Italian language. And um, even if we shouldn't be proud of it, of course. But you have to remember that Italy has been one of the most Catholic countries in history. So what happened? Exactly what usually happens when you want to rebel against something. The target of your rebellion and anger will be the most sacred, the most important things in your society. In this case, God. If food or, for example, lasagna was sacred, then probably the blasphemy would be intended to the lasagna, like Pig lasagna, or beach lasagna. I'm ashamed. Let's listen to the second claim, the verb piacere. Piacere. So here's a simple one that still kind of melts my brain. When I want to say that I like something, I would say mi piace questa o quella cosa. Mi piace literally means to me it likes. To say you like me in Italian, you would say something like ti piaccio, which if you literally translated it, it would be something more like to you I like. So essentially, in Italian, to say I like you, you say you like me. And if you want to say you like me, you say I like you. Yes, I admit that this might be very strange to foreigners. English with the verb like is much easier here. But isn't it the same in German or in Russian? Let me know in the comments down below if I'm wrong. This is due to the fact that the verb piacere is an intransitive verb. That means that it doesn't take the direct object. Don't you have in English too? Like for example, listen to me. It's not listen me. Or mm, let's meet there. Does it suit you? Come on, mate. Let's listen to the third claim, guys. Italians are literally insane when it comes to body parts. To explain why this doesn't make any sense whatsoever, let me give a little bit of context first. In Italian, like other Romance languages or other languages like German, nouns are split into different groups. 
in this case, masculine and feminine. It can be really random, um, but there are certain trends across the language. So for example, um, to say a house in Italian, you'd say una casa, and that ends with an A, and many nouns that end with an A are feminine. An oven in Italian is un forno, and that ends in an O, and many nouns that end in O are masculine. There are exceptions, but trends like this kind of help. It makes it easier to guess, if you will, when you're kind of in doubt. Ultimately, the only way to really know for sure is to just memorize words one by one, but there you have it. So, now that we have that cleared up, let's go back to body parts. One finger in Italian is un dito. Just pretty simple, right? Masculine, easy. But logically, you would think, okay, uh, one finger is masculine, so maybe two fingers would also be masculine, right? If only it were that simple. A lot of body parts in the plural turn to feminine. So, two fingers is actually due dita. Ends with an A. One knee, un ginocchio. Two knees, due ginocchia. Plurals. Masculine, feminine. Uh, I understand. It's a big mess. Especially because there's no precise rule. This is due to the Latin origin of the language because in Latin objects and parts of the body belonged to specific categories and they were masculine or feminine with no logical explanation. I understand this is extra learning but this is the life. But also English language has strange plurals like child, children, mouse, Mice, am I right? Every language contains weird rules, weird stuff. It's the natural consequence of their origins, of the time evolution, and of the several influences they got through the centuries. You know what? This stuff made me think that probably I love languages just because of their weirdest sides because they don't care about logics. And in this world, God knows how much we need emotions instead of logics. Of course, guys, I made this video just because I love languages in general, English, Italian, Hungarian, that I'm studying every day. Nathaniel, I hope you don't mind that I used some of your clips. Keep going. Thank you so much for watching.